This is Skip with the WSGF, and I am hopefully soon to embark on the game benchmarking suites that I mentioned in the fall before the holidays. I've been doing some updating on my uh, test box here, my gaming box. Wanted to share those with you. Also talk about the components that will be used in the testing and to talk about who has sponsored this so you'll know who um, has provided parts, both as a thanks to them and um, for elements of full disclosure. So the first thing here is the case. It is a Cooler Master HAF XB Landbox Evo. I purchased this. Um, and so I'm gonna take off uh, the top and the sides here. You can see here in the, uh, in the top through the grill, there's a 200 millimeter fan there. Uh, Cooler Master calls it the, the mega fan. It's pretty quiet. Um, actually, it's very quiet. And I'm using it to exhaust hot air out of the top of the case. So I'll pull that cable. You can uh, see the fan a little bit here. It's pretty large. Um, spit, spins pretty quietly. Um, inside we have a um, Asus Sabertooth 990FX um, R2.0 motherboard. This was provided by AMD along with the FX9590 CPU, which is here. Those parts originally came in um, a much larger build that they sent us uh, that had some six gigabyte 9790s, I think. Everything was water-cooled um, on closed loops. That box wouldn't have worked well for testing because removing the, the water cooling on everything every time I needed to um, adjust the GPU was just not feasible. Uh, so I found this case, which I really like for testing because it is open top. Uh, previously I'd used a, previously I'd used a Doma Designs open air test bench. Uh, I did a review of that a while back um, that has been up on the site for a while. It didn't offer support for any water cooling, um, traditional or closed loop like we have here. So I wanted to find something else that would work. I had um, originally looked at a Phobia Wacoolit case and it actually purchased it and went to set it up with the help of the Destroyer and Peanut, two editors, two editors here on the WSGF. And it was just not feasible to get the, the hosing um, from the lower part where the radiators would have set up through to the top. It's a, actually a huge, massive, big steel chassis was actually a little too big for the spot that I had for it. So again, I chose this Cooler Master HAF XB. It's really easy to work in, especially to swap video cards because everything comes here out of the top. So I migrated over the Sabertooth 990FX R2.0 and the 9590. For the longest time I ran it on air cooling. Uh, you may have seen the articles that came out where I did a bunch of CPU testing, so I didn't want to bother with um, installing and removing a uh, closed loop water cooler at the time to reapply the thermal grease and do all of that, and so the air cooling worked fine. Um, it became an issue when I put in the R9-295, which is here. Uh, this was provided by AMD. Uh, through some help by Club 3D. With the big cooler here, I didn't have space uh, for the hoses off of there for the, the built-in closed loop water cooler. So the motherboard CPU would originally come with a Corsair uh, two times one 20 millimeter radiator closed loop cooler. Um, it's the one that came with the 9590, I believe. Uh, if you look here, I didn't have room for a dual radiator setup, so I purchased myself this uh, Corsair H80i. Um, it's 140 millimeters, I believe. It's extra thick and it got really good reviews. People did complain about the fan noise, that they didn't like it, it was pretty loud, um, and I would agree with that. And so I purchased, um, I get most everything from either Newegg or Amazon, but the the um, fans came from from Amazon, but I purchased a um, if I get this off a pair of the SP120 
static pressure um, quiet version fans. So you can see one here on the inside. I put one here on the outside. So I actually have the two fans in push-pull here on the Corsair H80i. So all of that I purchased along with this uh, Cooler Master uh, silent fan to bring uh, some cool air here across the GPU, um, especially for when I'm using a non-water cooled card. For the airflow, it's bringing cold air in across all of them and then the warm air out the top. Um, the fan that was on the Radeon was originally pretty good, um, but it was a little loud for my taste, at least the sound profile, and I wanted to see what a pair of the SP120s would do. Uh, so I, I got a set of those and put them in as well. I had to mount one on the outside, which you can see here, because if I put it inside, it shoved all of this too far forward, and the edge here was hitting that 200 millimeter fan in the top. So I've got one on the outside, not too big of a deal. Just run one of the cables through this little hole here. Um, maybe you'll see it on this side. And then I just use a simple Y adapter for hooking the two fans to the one connection. One thing that was surprisingly difficult is to find a Y adapter for just a two pin fan. Um, nobody really makes those. I found this one, I forget who it was by, so that I could just jumper the two together. But as you can see, it's extremely long. I just needed something a really short stubby Y. And I found one, um, but the ends were white. The wiring was um, red, blue, and yellow, I guess, or whatever the standard colors are. So I ordered five of them in uh, from Hong Kong over eBay, plugged a bunch of them in together and just got some black spray paint and spray painted that so it wouldn't be just quite so uh, sore thumb. I did the same thing with the wire on the 200 millimeter um, Cooler Master fan that goes in the top. Found it kind of odd that you know this fan is behind that mesh on the top and everything's black and everything looks great, but then you got this bright red, white, or red, white, yeah, and black uh, cable. It, every time I look at it, 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 it just, again, stuck out like a sore thumb to me. So I've got a run of the mill Blu-ray drive up here for when I need that, uh, that I purchased a while back. Um, you can see kind of here on the side, we have a Corsair AX1200i. This was originally provided by um, AMD as well with that big monster box that they had sent that uh, we've since repurposed that the destroyer is using for, for testing and uh, DRs and that kind of stuff. I'd previously been running an Intermax 850 and before that I was running a Corsair 1000i on the Intel rig that I used to run a, a long time ago. Um, and then we have a, a pretty just run of the mill, really can't quite see it, half terabyte um, solid state drive Corsair M4 uh, that I purchased myself off Amazon when they went on big sale last year about Christmas. One thing I wanted to touch on real quick, uh, people have asked before and I'm sure somebody will ask again, uh, possibly in the forum or in the comments here, about why we only have AMD video cards, um, at least at this time, and uh, nothing from NVIDIA. Like many tech sites, um, and especially one like the WSGF, which um, isn't a big site that brings in lots of revenue, um, we get product for review from the companies when they wanna launch something new, or you know when they have a new iteration or a new version. Over the years, we've had different relationships with different companies. Um, earlier on in the history of the site, we had um, a pretty strong relationship with NVIDIA. Uh, they sent us a number of cards. You can go back and look at our old benchmarking um, articles and see those. We also helped consult on their surround implementation and driver and stuff. But recently, we haven't uh, been given access to cards to test or benchmark. In some sense, I can understand because we haven't put out a lot of that product recently. Hopefully with these new suites of testing that will change, uh, but if anybody from AMD or EVGA or any of the other AIB partners is interested in uh, providing cards for us to test and review and benchmark, we would be more than happy to do it. Uh, we are not exclusive with AMD. It is just how things have sort of settled out for right now. One last thing I wanted to look at is the monitors that we're using uh, for testing. This is my Affinity setup. And on the left and right are some Dell uh, P2211Hs, maybe U 
2211 uh, H's, 16 by 9, 1080p, 21 and a half inches. Um, I got those from AMD a long time ago when they were just rolling out 5x1 iFinity. Uh, the 11 on the end says it came out in about 2011. In the middle is the uh, ultra wide 2913 that Dell put out a couple of years ago. I purchased that so that we could start doing detailed reports and uh, that sort of thing and testing on that. So that's what I use for my Ifinity gaming and benchmarking with the new driver options in Catalyst for fit versus fill. For benchmarking, I can do 1920 by 1080p on each panel. Uh, so it's the matched resolution all the way across and it's not the mixed res Ifinity. So if we swing this way, so over here we find my Samsung 4K 60 Hertz panel that I purchased. If we zoom in here just a little bit, you can see I've got the panel running at 4K using a hack that was posted by one of our forum members a while back, Sukin to Mew. I've been able to add in 3440 by 1440 the newer 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Even when I try to force the Catalyst control panel to use GPU scaling and to fill, uh, you can see that it still reverts back to centered timings. So it's a rather small picture, but I do get the full 3440 by 1440 that I've been using for entries into the game's database to test ultra wide. And then I'll be using that here to benchmark ultra wide again at the 3440 by 1440 that's in the new 34 inch panels. Um, certainly fine for testing, but not really great to experience or showcase uh, what the new larger 21 by nine panels look like. We have just recently been approached by um, a company that exhibited at CES here just a couple of weeks ago, made a pretty big splash with ultra wides and curved panels. Um, it made a really big showing. I'm hoping that uh, we will be able to get some of their product to test on and showcase. And for me personally, just to promote the large form factor 21 by nine aspect ratio panels. Um, I've said for a long time, really going back to my five by one affinity testing that I thought a large 21 by nine aspect ratio would be great. Um, physically they're large, so they fill your vision height and width wise pretty well. Uh, from a resolution and horsepower standpoint, it's not um, a lot more resolution than your standard 2560 by 1440p, so you don't need a whole lot more GPU power than that, but it is significantly less GPU power than um, a full 3x1 Ifinity or surround setup, so you don't need quite as beefy as a video card. You get the greater aspect ratio over 16x9, and the aspect ratio really stops to where things start stretching badly at the edges. So you reduce a lot of the minuses of a full three by one setup. You eliminate a lot of the stretching. You also uh, don't need the heavy horsepower requirements, but on the positive side, physically these new screens are big. Um, resolution wise, the pixel density is great and you get that wider than 16 by nine FOV. So again, this is a really a full rundown of what we're testing with here what I'm benchmarking with. Um, we're going to be doing the 3440 by 1400 ultra wide, 3 by 1080p on Ifinity or surround if we can get some NVIDIA video cards, and then 4K. Um, I really don't think 4K is going to take off from a gaming perspective. I kind of agree with Linus when he said that after he got his first 34 inch 21 by 9 panel that 4K was dead to him. However, now that NVIDIA and AMD both have their super scaling resolution um, features in their drivers, I think looking at 4K is still important for people that want to run a, a doubled horizontally and vertically resolution, a 4K resolution on a 1080p panel to get that finer detail, not have to rely on anti-aliasing. So from a performance perspective, I think 4K is still really going to be important even if 4K panels themselves um, don't become a large fixture in the gaming community. Thanks for watching and for your interest in the widescreen gaming forum. Be sure to click and subscribe so that you'll be notified when our next videos make it out. Thanks.